Welcome back to Railcraft with Elfcorp and NOS. Today we're going to be looking at all the steam powered devices because we've got our high pressure boiler ready to start raging. We've got a bit of creosote to, well, to kill the animals with, or to destroy the atmosphere with, and we're ready to go or something. Fuck it. Yeah. Sorry, I was having a bit of a hot smoking moment there. <laughs> I'm waiting for the point where I hear the sound of a Zippo lighter and you start smoking. Sweet nicotine eases the pain. <laughs> Alright, so we're going to do... Well, we'll go through the three kinds of engines you can have with Railcraft first, which is the hobbyist, the commercial, and the industrial engine. And those respectively put out buildcraft power for what it's worth 1.6 megajoules 4 then 8 and 4 and 8 megajoules is a fair bit once you see that cranking and we'll use that to power the rock crusher and we'll then use our mad steam power as it's going to power our steam turbine which produces IC IC2 and universal electricity power so let's get cracking NOS do you want to knock up one of each engine yeah we can so, what do we need for For the hobbyist engine, it's a gold-based engine. If you know your Buildcraft engine recipes, you'll you'll know that sort of one of them's based on stone, one of them's based on iron, one of them's based on wood. For this, there's one based on gold, one based on iron, but with iron plates as the top, and then one based on steel. We've got no wood and no cobblestone. Yeah. And no, uh, no piston. Don't make me get out my rusty axe. That's a steel axe. Yeah, but it's rusty. Piston down the bottom, glass, and then gold nuggets across the top. Alright, so I'll whack that one down here next to the rolling machine, just for shits and giggles. So you fuel that with a solid fuel, in this case I'm going with coal coke, because that's not a bad alternative to coal. It's double the double the output power. You need to fill them with water. They must always have water. If they don't, then they will eventually explode. If you try and put water in it after it's empty and hot, they will explode. You can see As that in our last video. Yeah, you can see that in our last video. So this one, unlike the other two styles, has an internal boiler. The other two require an external steam source to be powered. So we're going to use this one on our rolling machine to make the plates we need for the other ones. And then we're going to pipe the creosote into our high pressure boiler we made in the last episode. Get that cranking and get the steam going over to some engines and some other machines. Kind of like watching paint dry. Come on, come on, I got a buddy in the trunk. So this one requires iron gears. Then your plates across the top. So, for this one, it just needs steam. It doesn't need water or anything else. How much creosote's left? 56 buckets. We're producing steam. Oh, yeah. Still need to keep hammering this oil, though, because it's not up to temperature yet. The hotter it gets, though, the less it is using. Yeah. Like, that's almost keeping up now. And we're almost out of creosote. Okay, so there's the commercial running. Oh, sweet as. So, you look at how much faster that's producing plates. Ah, oh, that's insane compared to the old one. Yeah, but that's outputting four MJ. So if we have a look at this as it's burning the fuel, you can see the difference in the burn time. So pretty much if you're going to run a high pressure boiler, use fuel. Don't even bother with creosote. You've seen the difference. I mean, look at this. This is burning. Well, the official figures are for fuel, you get 96,000 steam per bucket of fuel you get 3200 for creosote so do the maths it's like 30 times better and this system's easily keeping up with that now 
So for a rock crusher, the whole idea is that you crush rocks. Kind of like a macerator, except that it has a special item called obsidian... Oh, no, sorry, crushed obsidian, and then obsidian dust. You use crushed obsidian as a ballast alternative to gravel that doesn't get exploded. Okay, so total that you need for the rock crusher. 12 pistons, 12 diamonds, and 27 steel ingots. So that'll be the first thing you build, so it'll be, you know, punch trees, build rock crusher. Yep. Absolutely. Only fails don't have a rock crusher on their first day. Okay, so that gives us our 12 units that we need. That's built in a 2x3x2. By by okay, so we've got the rock crusher placed. We'll put an industrial engine beside it to power it. And you see the rock crusher, it's just got a 3x3 three three in, 3x3 three three out, so it's not too complicated. And it runs off of buildcraft power, so we've got the industrial engine going. Now, the industrial is the top tier engine, whereas this one produces 4 megajoules per tick. This one produces 8. You've got to have a pretty kick and boiler to feed it, but that's exactly what we've got. So we'll grab some obsidian, and we'll chuck it in, and we'll see what happens. Or some cobblestone. Oh, if you want to be that guy. Now, it's not quick, so if you've got IC2, use your macerator for cobble. The thing is, it's also consuming um, steam from the other one. So what we might do, we might run a second steam pipe from the from the broiler to that engine. All right, so that should have a better feed because now before it was getting split. Yeah, there we go. Is that keeping up now? Yeah, it's almost eight, seven and a half. All right, cool. So if we want to chuck some obsidian in here, all right, so we'll chuck some obsidian in. And off that'll chug. It uses a lot of power and makes a really cool noise. So even for this, if you want, theoretically, if you wanted this to go ballistic, you'd have to have two industrial engines. Running at full tilt, yeah. So this will produce crushed obsidian and sometimes produce obsidian dust. Which the obsidian dust you can then crush again, yeah? No, the crushed obsidian you crush again to get obsidian dust. Ah. So crushed obsidian is your ballast material, and obsidian dust is used for... Fuck knows, I'll look it up. Reinforce rail. So it's a bit of a mission to get all this up and running, but it's absolutely cranking now. And our steam boiler, if you look at it, it's still only 340 degrees, which compared to the maximum, it's nowhere near. That'll just keep getting more and more efficient. Okay, so we'd be able to power a fair few engines off this. Yeah. You just have to run individual gold pipes, because they're the restriction. Okay, so we'll get started on the oh, oh. steam turbine now. Yeah, sorry, I didn't actually mean to hit you there, that was for once an accident. <laughs> First time ever. The next one we're going to look at is a steam turbine. Now that produces industrial craft or universal electricity power, and again that's using steam, drives a turbine, and then creates power, you know, just like any kind of power plant really. So for that, you need a crap ton of mats. It's not cheap. Is that the technical term? Yeah. I, um, I've made one of these vanilla, and yeah. As in vanilla with no quarry, so I had to go spelunking for the mats. So what is it? So it's 12, it's 2 by 3 by 2 so it's 12 pieces, so 4 sets of this. So that's 36 steel blocks. 36 yep. steel plates. Uh, don't know about that, Maths. Because I said 32 and it should be less than that. Just make a heap up and you'll see how you go. Steel blocks you can recycle. And we've already got Sorry. 50 steel plates. 16 steel blocks. You've got all the mats in the chest there for that. So, cool. there's your blocks. Now you've got to make the turbine, which is more steel. Which requires turbine blades to make a turbine rotor, and then you put them together and make something else. Now 
yeah, you make use tur three turbine blades to make a turbine disc. Sorry, eight turbine blades and a block of steel to make a turbine disc. And then three turbine discs to make a turbine rotor. And they last a couple of days. Real time, at least. Yeah. That's if it's running all the time. That's a ridiculous amount of steel. So we're, we're creating more steam than we can use or handle, so this is where we'd be converting it. Okay. So there's the steam turbine hooked up. Okay, so we'll make the blades first. Okay, turn the blades around a block of steel into the turbine disc. And then three turbine discs makes your turbine rotor. Cool. So we'll plonk that in the steam turbine. And off it goes. Now we don't have IC2 installed on here so you'll have to use your imagination that there'd be a wire hanging off of that. It requires 320 steam per tick in but it creates 100 EU per tick out. 100 EU per tick is... Oh, it's sort of a half-decent nuclear reactor. Probably a four-stick, four-uranium rod reactor. To kind of put it in perspective. So it's a fair bit. And that uses not as many mats, but, you know, this is the alternative. Especially if you don't have IC2 or something like that, this is where you get mass... BC power from. So yeah, that's all of your steam consumers. Next time we'll be looking at using our crushed obsidian and relaying track and undercutting track using the little carts they use. So until then, see ya. See ya.